Thanks everybody for being here. Welcome to Augmented Reality Pioneers first meetup. Cheers. And, uh, this is a much bigger turnout than I could have anticipated, so thank you guys for all being here. Um, thank you, Matthew Rosenberg, for letting us use MRAD architecture um, as a space, pretty dope space. Um, there's also a sign-in sheet over there afterwards if you guys want to send up an email and get stay connected. Um, we got the Facebook, Twitter, and the Meetup, which probably most of you guys have found about this in the Meetup. Um, we have uh, Steven who's going to be presenting a demo after my short talk <laughs> over here. And then we also have Pablo, who has the Austin Mogario V200 glasses. He's going to be doing an interactive demo for us as well. Um, so pretty cool. Um, it'll be fun. We'll learn a little bit. Um, my intention is to kind of have this be a little bit of a round table. So um, if you know more than what I'm presenting, feel free to interrupt or raise your hand. If you have questions, feel free to interrupt. It's going to be casual. Um, my intention for having this was to just learn more and connect with people that are obsessed with augmented reality as I am. <laughs> so um, that's sort of the flow. Um, so, We'll, I'll start off with a quick synopsis of my research um, and what I've kind of been interested in, um, and then we'll move forward um, and do another two presentations, and then we'll do a demo, and then we'll do a roundtable um, Q and A if we have time. Um, there's snacks over there. Jamila brought some healthy superfood, organic vegan snacks that she's taking donations for back there, yeah. and there's and also brain wine. Tonics. What's that? And brain tonics. And brain tonics. <laughs> You want to augment your reality right now, <laughs> and then or augment your tummy, and then there's also wine and snacks and stuff. So help yourself. Bathroom is next. Okay, so I'm gonna face this way because it's easier. And who are you, Ben? Yes, thank you. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm a floating meta chat over here. I know, right? You can see it in my. Um, I'm a local designer. Um, I have a master's degree of architecture from SciArc. That's where I met Matthew. Um, I work for a small architecture firm in Venice, and I'm obsessed with augmented reality. Um, I also have a small design outfit um, in Old Space. Um, we do um, interactive installations um, and designs for 3D printing and. Um, we also do large scale um, production mapping with our partner com company, Prophecy Production, which I do with this tall guy over here, John DeGoyer, um, who is the visuals master. And um, yeah, so we've actually been playing in this quasi augmented space just with projection mapping for a while, and that's you know been really, really interesting. Um, so yeah. What's projection mapping? Um, projection mapping is basically, if you see over here, the, this geometry over here, this geometry, this geometry, that geometry. Yeah. These are three installations that um, uh, we as Prophecy Production created content from 3D model, reprojected back onto the physical 3D model, and then move it. So it has this sort of holographic illusion Ooh, that see. it's um, moving. Yeah, and I guess you were in the bedroom wall studio. Yes. The, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
Some of you may have heard about it. Maybe you're just here because you're my friend and you're supporting, in which case I love you. And uh, after tonight, we'll decide for a strange enough to continue to call your friend. Um, so I'm going to start off by defining augmented reality. Augmented reality is a live, direct, or indirect view of a physical, real-world environment whose elements are augmented or supplemented by computer-generated sensory input, such as sound, video, graphics, etc. It is a form of mixed reality which lends itself to new experiences and processes. So, taking a step away from the hardware discussion, let's just take a look at what augmented reality looked like in 1989. <laughs> <laughs> So if you couldn't hear, he says, the shark still looks
mobile devices, which I thought was really interesting um, because it kind of got me, I mean, I was already interested in augmented reality, but it really fueled my interest in, in thinking about the future of augmented reality and where we're at, we are now. So um, how many of you consider coming tonight without your mobile device? <laughs> okay, so um, this, uh, this device here, which I love, um, has basically become an extension of my body, um, I, an extension of my business, an extension of my social, it's pretty much um, a part of my functioning. Uh, when I don't have it, I feel like I'm missing a limb. Um, so there's this, uh, and one of the things Carl said was, is this a mobile device? If I leave it on the table and I walk away, does it move? No, it doesn't. It stays there. And his point was that we are the mobile devices. So we are constantly moving and constantly functioning. And this guy gives us superpowers. So it allows us to post, network, respond, create, communicate, all on the fly. Um, in a sense, it is already augmenting our reality, you could argue. Um, so I think that, that what's interesting about these devices is going to be um, when they evolve, when the hardware evolves, how they will go to be something that would eventually replace a phone or at least supplement a phone. I think with the HoloLens, and feel free anyone to chime in, I think at first, like what Steven was saying to me a couple of days ago, is it's going to be kind of more like an engineering tool at first, kind of like having a 3D printer in with us. Uh, you have a HoloLens and you need to do presentation or do some sort of um, creative activity, but I don't know that it might be set up to just walk around town with right off the bat. It might be a little silly. Um, so we're in the architecture office. I thought it'd be appropriate to show an example of what Microsoft is pitching for architects and how they might use the HoloLens. You'll have to deal with the sounding a little bit low. Sorry about that. I have a lot of things to bring for a speaker. And the real world. It doesn't feel natural, I think, is the, the big issue. Thank you. I've tried that. I thought I didn't like it because 
I was in the game. I, I was I was with you on that. I think and I think a lot of people are the guy who I demoed it with, we've been kind of emailing back and forth about it and he's he feels the same way. But you know, it's the beginning and it's right. yeah. it's gonna get there eventually. But I read I read an article recently that they let go sixty of their developers recently. Oh, oh yeah. that's a <laughs> Yeah, a lot of their, I guess a lot of their developers placed a trail somewhere for all of them, and they let go like 50 or 60 of them. You can Google it, it's fine. All over so, <laughs> I think it's the field of view thing and what you're describing kind of turn people off to it. It's yeah. just not functional. Mm -hmm. I tried out the Oculus yeah. setup, and that, I don't know about this, this is new, I never heard of this. The Oculus is great, and actually I have uh, my Oculus here with a Magic Leap um, forehead mount, oh, so you can track your hands, uh -huh. and so that'll be one of the interactive demos we'll have. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you, but you, you, got you got I just got, I just got really, yeah, yeah, I just got shocked. You gotta stay until the end to try that out, so you gotta hear Ben Lloyd out until you get to try it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you gotta deal with my presentation first, play with the toys. Um, it, yeah, but we're, we're, we're moving along here. Um, so really quickly, perfect segue, um, virtual reality. <laughs> Some of you guys are, in, are, have, are familiar with the Oculus or the Gear VR. Um, this is another point I took from Carl Rosendahl's um, talk. Is the, different, the main difference between the applications of virtual reality and augmented reality is that virtual reality is immersive. You're immersing yourself in a virtual environment. Um, augmented reality, on the other hand, is expansive. Augmented reality works with the existing environment to allow you to apply new functions to it. So what is she looking at? Here she's in a piece of architecture. This could be potentially awesome um, if you're showing a client a space that you're designing for them, um, or you're playing a really immersive game, or something like that, um, and you can shut off from the world. However, you will have to take this thing off to talk to somebody, go to the bathroom, not bump into a wall. Um, <laughs> Things like that. So it does have some limitations. Um, augmented reality, on the other hand, you can maintain contact with your environment. Um, you can, you know, match colors in a room and things like that. So it gets a little bit more um, expansive. Um, here's a quick thing that was just released a week ago from Magic Leap. They're saying this was shot directly through Magic Leap technology on October 14th, 2015. Um, they're saying no special effects, so we can discuss. Wow. Um, so they're using a camera to sort of convince that this is what would be. And their whole thing is that they are focusing their light. There's no glass on their, their glasses. What they've released is a, a statement that they're focusing the light into the retina to trick it that it's um, perceiving photons like it would in real space. So it's projecting <laughs> on your retina. <laughs> projecting onto the retina. It's that a head-mounted head head display <laughs> that is projecting into the eye, <laughs> rather than onto a glass. So you get full frame. Now this is obviously not projecting onto the eye. This is combining the, te the tracking technology, from what I can understand, with a camera. And they're using the, the rack focus as kind of a, to show you that it is kind of live and not post perfection. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, they're saying, that. their statement is that, well, that, they recorded that was their whole statement at the beginning, that there was no post production, that this was a live tracking yeah. uh, demo. Through their, through their system, yeah. Kind of like the HoloLens demo when they show the entire field of view. It's not really post, but it's, not really with the person seeing. Yeah. It's kind of a it's kind of what you're seeing from another angle. What I find really interesting, I don't know if everybody saw this, in the very beginning you saw the occlusion of the left of the table. Yeah. 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 That was probably the most interesting one yeah. of the occlusion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. If that's really done without posts, then they must really get a sense of the volume and well, because they scan it, right? They, the whole thing is it's gonna scan They could have pre-scanned it. So is anyone here familiar with the structure sensor? Yeah. So I actually brought that as well, um, it's on a little iPad, and what you can do with that, there's an app on there that should be loaded, um, you scan the table, and it, gets, it makes a 3D mesh of the table, and then you can play a game where you drop balls on the table, and uh -huh. it can actually physics react with the table, so long that it's scanned beforehand. So that requires a step of scanning the space beforehand. I think the goal with these head-mounted units is to be constantly 30 frames per second scanning the space you're in, so it's constantly tracking and getting occlusion data. Like so, Project Angle, for example. Yes, and I'm not as familiar, maybe you could 
can you give us well, Django is a technology from Google. Yeah. So they have this tablet, yeah. Android based, and they have uh, three sensors uh, depth sensor, a wide, wide angle camera, and I think infrared is the third one. And so they're really tracking, they're generating a 3 point cloud in real time. Mm -hmm. And so for architecture, you can, for example, um, yeah, map your space where you walk around, and then if you have a map of that same space, it, it kind of knows where you are. And that's the future of tracking. With the, with the so it's combining a previous, three, or like a 3D model that's generated in the computer exactly. with your 3D model of where you are, yeah. and kind of showing you where you are in the future. But that, what you can also do, though, is take the depth sensor and create on the fly basically a 3D perception of what the environment is. You know, if, it's, you know, it, if it's smart enough, it can actually build a 3D model of your environment on the fly. It just needs a very high As you're walking through. Yeah, as you're walking through. Yeah, so that's, sure. that's really where the technology is going, and that's what Connect does. It like, sees like, very high resolution depth directly on it. So we can actually place things in front of behind real objects. Well, the is now a recognition that will take a lot longer, and for which we need uh, kind of a parallel processor, right? I didn't quite catch you. Well, we will need an object recognition, so you can scan the space, but you will still not know that it's a table, right? So oh, yeah. that, that needs to happen as well. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. Um, so just a couple more slides here, and then we'll move to the next presentation. Um, we already talked about this. Um, this last four slides or so. Um, going to talk a little bit about where we're at with the hardware, um, just kind of as, as a in the way thing. Um, so this is the, I'm oh, sorry. So what's going to happen in the next few years? I don't know. <laughs> but what could happen? Maybe the glasses within the next year or so will look like aviators, like this meta one thing. And they'll actually be cool to wear, and I'll wear them all the time. Um, and experiment with them. And this is what I'll look like having my coffee in the morning, except with the aviators. Um, so if we're still friends after this meetup, then prepare yourself to be friends with someone who looks like this. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna probably have a lot of headaches. Um, again, um, my favorite movie of all time, 1989. This is what dinner might look like if the headsets ever were to catch on um, and replace mobile devices. I don't really use power that much. Notice the left and the right. <laughs> Nailed it. Why didn't fly the show? <laughs> so yeah, and I think, yeah, sure, that might happen. It might not. I don't know. It's They came pretty close, and I think technically this is the year 2015. Not yeah, wasn't that right? Like a couple weeks ago. Like a couple weeks ago. So 1989 to 2015. That is. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> so that thing looks like a HoloLens. <laughs> we also thought about the absolute nightmare that this can generate when uncontrolled or out of hand, and and um, which is arguably, which is arguably, awesome. arguably more important. And um, we haven't even begun to speak of privacy, which we don't have time for. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, I, I, maybe I didn't mention, I'm hoping that this can be a regular meetup. Um, so if anybody here wants to present their ideas or their projects and get feedback and critique, that's the whole idea of this, is that we're all doing this together. We're all interested in pioneering this space. Um, um, I'm just happy to do this first one, but yeah, so please, um, let's keep in touch, talk to me after, because if you want to take us through some of that sci-fi, that would be awesome. Right. I would love that, and I'm sure we all would love that, love too. It. Um, okay, cool. Um, so, maybe the glasses will stick around. Um, what, will okay. be, what will life be like after the glasses? Um, maybe there'll be contacts. Yeah. Yes. Could you go back one more? Uh, 
Uh, sure. So what? Is that last uh, step? Um, no, because then I have to play the video again. Uh, I can, can we do it after? Um, then uh, this was, I don't even know who made this, but um, this is some <laughs> concept. You didn't you know? US military. US military? Okay, so here's the contact. Um, here's a short film that I found. I'm just going to play the first couple minutes of it. I thought it's pretty interesting um, because it has some pretty cool user interface examples of um, the contact situation, um, which gets to the point that really, like, I'm not super interested in the hardware at the end of the day. Um, the hardware is going to be a huge component of what happens with this in reality, but the software is going to be, is the software is going to outlive the hardware at some point, in my opinion. Um, this short film is about a guy who basically is gamifying everything, so he's basically kind of gamified his life. Um, that's one way to take it. Oh, sorry. Again, I don't know. Has anybody seen this? <laughs> so here he's in a full virtual reality law. <laughs> Eventually, it would be to, you know, what I'm kind of working on is, 
is to build together you know, some tools, some curated designs of my own. Um, I'm working on a project called Augmental, um, which I just created a super quick splash page, and I'm just building the website now. It's going to have, um, I'm going to be blogging about our, me and potentially Steven and Vince and Benny's, um, and maybe Justin and whoever else wants to join. Um, our development through some of the SDKs, any tips and anything that we're, we want to share. Um, and um, basically, for me personally, this project, my idea is to create sort of an agency, create high-end curated experiences that are not just demos, but are things that can be marketed for you know, activations or um, specific applications for specific tools and get some technology um, embedded in the process. Um, and that's, that's sort of where I'm at. And now I'm going to introduce Steven okay. over here. Woo! Let's keep it here. So while this is being set up, there, there's a short film that I've been hunting for. If anybody here knows it, please let me know. That was shot in the UK approximately 96, 97 of, a, of an artist. And she spent a month wearing glasses that reversed the optical effect, that the optical illusion that we all have, that we see the world matching gravity and she basically reversed the projection of the optical nerve. Yeah, brain can use right? Hmm? Brain can use it. Well, so she was walking upside down? <laughs> she, she spent, so, so, so the, the short follows her and, and, and the beauty because it's a movie also lets us experience what she experienced which was that for approximately two weeks she felt that she was walking in a world where people were you know, walking on the sidewalk um, above her and not falling into the sky beneath her. After the two week period that the brain apparently needs to get used to that, she started seeing the world downside right through those glasses, at which point, being the brave artist she is, was, is, um, she took off the glasses and spent the next two weeks recovering, which meant yeah. that she was now living in a reality where without those glasses <laughs> on her head, people were walking up there, oh. and she was interacting with them. It's an amazing wow. short film. That's fascinating. It, it doesn't even get close to what it meant, but, but augmented reality doesn't have to have computers in it. Which is the ironic thing. Oh, he was asking for the, the name. Oh, okay. I, 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 I remember seeing it. It's in black and white. It's a um, short film from, I don't know, British Film School or, or one of the independent film schools in the UK. As I said, circa 94 to 98. If I find it there, if I just say there is a short film, nobody's going to want that. <laughs> Neuroscience short six episode story about the brain. I think it's called In Reality or something. They're showing that experiment. Actually, that's like a different one when it left and right they're switched. And it's been around. Uh, they, the they <coughs> um, there's a book and that series that just came out, I would say, five or six weeks ago. So it's still a previous you can find it. It's really interesting what's happening in the like yeah, yeah, kind of like yeah. Now even neuroesthetics, which I think is the most interesting field. Yeah. Well, that's it. Um, do you have something else after? No, that, uh, finishing one thought that just popped into my mind that's funny. In that sense, Braille is on my Sure. From our perspective, right. not from somebody who's a fully really free. We were essentially made to augment. <coughs> With our brains, we're not meant to live like the simple stuff, lives in the dirt and stuff. Right. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm Stephen Walker, and uh, I don't really know how to label myself. Um, 
because I do a lot of things, but I guess you could say I'm an aspiring audiovisual artist. Uh, I'll just play some stuff in the background. Um, I produce music and I do visuals. I used to work in visual effects. Uh, I'm also an app and uh, game developer. I've been working with Unity for about five years or so, and I've had released maybe like a dozen or so apps. Um, and so I just talked, started talking to Ben Lloyd recently, and uh, he kind of spurred me on to get into augmented reality space, which to me represents absolutely everything in the future and everything I want. I spend way too much time with my face stuck in a computer screen, and I dream of the day where I can do all of my programming, all of my visual arts, free in the world, like walking around my apartment, interacting with things, and having virtual spaces, coding even, where I'm not constrained to this little view, viewport here and sitting like this in that posture. I want to take it out into the real world. So for me, augmented reality is about um, what, it, what it can do artistically. And what I aspire to do is to uh, incorporate it into experiences that could be even transcendent in spiritual nature. Um, so these, these were just done like After Effects, but it, the idea is like, what if you could take this and make it 3D in, in an environment and it has music and it's interactive and, you, and you're engaging with other people and you're standing in the same environment. Imagine how impactful that would be, especially as the technology becomes more transparent and less of a burden. Because right now it's very constricting, you're kind of stuck in this box. Um, but when it becomes part of our nature, it's going to be free flowing and it's going to change everything, like the way we interact with each other and in our ordinary lives, just like the video shows. It's kind of scary, actually. There's definitely some scary ramifications. Um, so anyway, not to get off too much on this tangent here with this. It's beautiful. beautiful. That's so beautiful. beautiful. It's really beautiful. Thank wow. You. And if you guys want to check out my music, uh, Axon Genesis, I've been producing music for about three years and uh, just kind of finding my feet with that still. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of suffer from trying to do it every, everything. Like doing art one day, I'm doing programming another day, and I'm doing music, and it's like, ah. But uh, I feel like it's all coming together into one cohesive thing, and I think augmented reality is the key. So um, I'd like to show you guys, I, I kind of wanted to get a sense, though, for like all of you guys. Like, How many here would consider, consider themselves developers? Oh, or how about coders? Like anybody who's just a little bit of scripting? Uh, and people use Unity? Okay, awesome. So there's a few. I'm not going to get super technical, but I'd like to show um, just some of the basic setup. Now, um, the main thing I've been focused on is the idea of having image trackers. And the idea is basically, let me grab one of these. Um, this might be super basic for people already understand. <coughs> The idea is that you can take any, any unique image and you can register it as a tracker or a marker. And what happens is in the video, when, the, um, when you're using a webcam or an iPhone or whatever, it, it's, it's looking for this marker and when it matches it, it will actually do live tracking in real time and match the camera angle to it so that you can get a 3D scene that's motion matched to that in, in, in real time. Um, so that's that's like one of the, the primary ways augmented reality is used right now. There's different, there's other things like face tracking and stuff. But I mainly wanted to see what could I do like with a super low budget right now. What can I create with augmented reality using Unity? And so I looked at some different SDKs, um, and basically there's only a few like key players out there that you can actually get stuff running right now. Um, AR Toolkit is one, Euphoria is another, uh, and then Kudan is the other. And my primary focus was on Euphoria, just because it was super easy to get started. I mean, it's, it's so simple to download the SDK, get it running in Unity, and it's free uh, initially until you want to release something, you want to produce something. Did you try Meta? You know, I, you can't get it anymore, because it's been bought by Apple. Oh, okay. But yeah, that was the other big player. So Apple, obviously, is going to be a big you know, proponent in all of this. I would, I would, I would highly I anticipate that they're going to come out with something in the next year, you know, some, some sort of built-in thing into the iOS. Um, uh, but anyway, I'd like to show you just a basic setup of how this works. Um, so this is a Euphoria scene. Uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see, it's kind of hard. <coughs> but essentially, all you have is this, this AR camera setup. And each of my image trackers are here at the planes. And then I've attached 3D objects to, to them. 
so if I've moved my scene, I've set up. I just went through my house and I grabbed some things. I grabbed some paintings and I grabbed some um, just items that were identifiable, like registers, trackers, and just to mess around with them. Uh, I feel a bit lost in one. I don't you see using the track on this. Uh, but if I already demo this, really quick, you can see what happens when I run this scene. So I'm using an external webcam here just to have a little bit of free, free movement. I don't want to show this. I got this cool little block do something made today. That's okay, I'll just use the built-in webcam. So when, it, when I bring this up, what's going to happen is it automatically identifies it. <laughs> and you know, it has a certain limit, limitation though, if I move too fast or if I get too far, it loses it and no longer recognizes it. So it's not full, it's not recognizing the 3D object when this is, it's completely 2D, it's just looking at the outer grid looking for um, any markers that, that kind of match. And you can see that when you get into the, like when you actually create a marker, it shows you the key points it's looking for, like high contrast corners and uh, unique features that it can match. But you see it's it's still not solid. It's, it, there's a lot of bugginess in it. But still it's like a super awesome start for like mm -hmm. basically yeah. no money. <laughs> uh, there's a point point. Point. Yeah, the raspberry is like that too. Yeah, the raspberry. Yeah. Really, yeah. Really, really yeah. Really and there's there's commercial applications like Rasmus One and one from the bar where they actually provide more of a service to people who want to have a product placement like you know, <coughs> One of their examples was the Lucky Charms box. If you go in the store and you have the app, you can put your phone on the on the box, and then the box comes out with like games and stuff built into it. There's a digital magazine app that I think it's called Fun Double N app. Yeah, and 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 it's uh, it's kind of I can see it definitely has like pop up media that you don't normally see on the on a thing. Right. Can actually give you an extra. He has it on his piece. business cards too, so that would be yeah. his business card. It's still a little wanky. I paid for his app and it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. I'm going to show you just a few of the others. I did a business card once you get ready. That's a good way. Also, too, you know, so I, I showed you that block just now. But the other, the other interesting thing is that it, it's based on the size. It doesn't, or it's not, it doesn't matter what the size is. So if I take this and I put it up here, you know, it's just a piece of paper. So you can, that's a cool thing is you can print out your own trackers. You don't necessarily need something very complicated. Um, I did a real, a real quick test of my business card. It wasn't super fancy, but uh, just this is just kind of All right. fancy. <laughs> 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 and then I just went to Lego. And so you're extending beyond the frame of the card in that in this scenario too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you can. Um, the scaling is really interesting because you can get one to one matching. So when you have like like this border. You can have that perfectly match. I was actually able to align the letters with a great deal of accuracy. Um, and then, yeah, so the you can have it go beyond the, the borders of the object. <laughs> and later, I have a demo where you're just painting. Uh, that's a painting I did many years ago, and I thought that's a little bit easier to create a little 3D scene. So all the, the things pop out as cubes, and there's some atmospheric effects and some particles. And I've got a um, this. Let's show this too real quick. This. Um, So in terms of eyewear, Google Cardboard, which probably many of you have heard about, this is less than 20 bucks. You would order on Amazon, and it's just cardboard held together with like glue and rubber bands. <laughs> but you put your phone in here, and it splits the view and creates a augmented reality experience. So that's the next the next part. So what I've showed you so far is Euphoria running. So the next thing I want to do is integrate Euphoria, which provides the, the live augmented reality tracking, and then split it into the cardboard view. So, virtual reality? Yeah. This, most applications you see for this are virtual reality, so they're you know, right on a roller coaster system. So that was, the, that was the thing I wanted to figure out. I want live camera for me coming in and oh, pass the 3D object in it. Because I'm more interested in augmented reality than virtual reality. Yeah. Just because me, it has more applications and for the art I want to do, I want it to be more immersive experience. So the, the difference in this scene is that I've added the cardboard stuff, and luckily, Euphoria comes with 
Um, it comes with a pre set up way that you can, you can do an error and have a left and right split. So I'm just going to play this real quick and you can see um, that even in here, to get the left and right eye, and, and the same tracking works. <coughs> this is, you know, what's happening is this is a glossy card, so that it's really interfering with the, the tracking. A map finishes better. Could you do this with a face? Like recognize a face and then make a mask of a face then? Well, if it's an actual person's face, yeah. the problem with that is it's three dimensional, so you, if you're straight on with right lighting, it might work. Okay. But you really want something that's gonna be consistent throughout. Gotcha. But the facing the face tracking features, that that's gonna happen in the future where you'll be able to recognize somebody. Right. And, be able to and like, 3D yeah, object, 3D 3D object like, trackers is no. is started to be released in Euphoria. Like it's an option, but right. it's not Super, they're not really saying anything super sophisticated because right. everyone wants to do that. <laughs> and I didn't actually, I didn't get around to doing this demo of like to do 3D trackers, so I'm not even showing like the dance. This is actually very simple, very basic stuff. But if you come by later and want to see the um, all the different items, you can kind of explore it and just see. What, this is just only, only like a few days of work, you know, put this together and like mess around the scene. Most of the time, it was like trying to figure out why my shadows weren't working and you know, stupid stuff. Do you guys have any questions about well, you two, uh, Just make a note on uh, face tracking. There's two solutions. Um, you can put a QR code, like, on, like a small QR code, so you can track, and then it just kind of guesses where your face is. Um, but the technology is slowly developing where it can track and map dynamic 3D objects, but that's not it's still as well. Right. Because your face moves, so it isn't the same mm -hmm. it's shape all the time. Right, you know, unless you have heavy mascara. Black and white thing, so that basically tracks the black and white eyes. Another thing for the face. Yeah, right. There's research being done at SC that actually tracks your face, and it can project like a monkey's face. And so, whenever you move and talk, it'll recognize that and project. That onto the monkey face. I'm afraid it doesn't have to be a monkey face. Actually, it's Vince, it, yeah, I'm, I'm actually he's a specialist. I own a motion capture studio and I do a lot of motion capture tracking of face and all the different technologies behind marker tracking versus non marker tracking and all that. And there's uh, one called Face Shift that just got bought that actually tracks the different features of your face in real time. And it got pulled off the market because I think it was Apple that bought it. Yeah, that's not available anymore. But one of the guys that developed Face Shift. Is teaching at SC, and he's one of the guys that's developing this and technology that do facial recognition. And he's got a company, and we should get him as a guest. Um, he's got a company in Santa Monica now too. So uh, I think he's available actually for people to invest and and, and develop. With him. So he's, he's really smart. What's your motion to get in? Uh, there's several different ones. Uh, one, it's now Rouge Productions. It used to be called Just Cause Productions. And I have another one called Springboard Productions. And another one called Sacred 360. Another one called Motown Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I was going for a Cinebag or Health. But as far as the uh, face tracking software goes, Face Shift is actually the weaker of, them, of the options out there. Face Wear is actually stronger. There's another one called Dynamic XYZ. Won several awards out of France. It's really good, and uh, the, I know that Digital Domain is actually coming up with a better version now that does super high res tracking down to like little tiny twitches in your face. Where your face shift is like better than a motion builder face tracker. Um, face shift is kind of like it'll give you the mouth, it'll give you a little bit of squash and stretch and the eyebrow stuff, but it's not something that you would use for feature film or off triple video games. You want to go towards face wear or dynamic XYZ. Just for helmet cam based non markable spatial tracking. So it, it's totally out there. But this stuff for augmented reality where you're putting QR codes on your face, that's still going through this uh, marker tracking software that's going to be more of an AR based solution. Thank you. I'll just show one thing, uh, this one last thing, because I don't know if everyone will get around to seeing, seeing it themselves, because I, I only have two devices really that can do it. Um, it's just this painting. Let's see. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
And once, once the marker is recognized, you can actually get in really close. Oh, I have a little texture. It was like my flower on the sun. <laughs> Wait, so did I miss something, or how is it? I must have missed something. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> I think it's it's even more interesting when you have the three goggles on and you can walk around it because it does give you that sense of it's like right in front of you. Uh, you actually have to get pretty close initially for it to recognize, but once it's recognized it, it will hold it for sure like pretty far back. And you should have the different SDKs is a little different. Like, um, Kudan has better tracking and it's much faster snap. So there's a delay and it's kind of slow. Whereas Kudan is really fast. But um, Kudan developed his work in the editor right now in the movie. It only works on those guys. So there's a slow process. I didn't find it as flexible as this before. Yeah. Um, also, it doesn't have the integration with our work yet. Hey, have you ever messed around with audio? Comparing audio with some of this stuff? Like, Actually, there is audio in this. Oh. Uh, if you get closer, there's like a little sound. So it, it adjusts from your distance. There's also these, the Google Tech Glasses. Um, I just got them today. Obviously, I don't really like them. The, the phone doesn't hold it very well. It doesn't block out the light. Uh, it doesn't work with the iPhone very well. And I don't know why, but some of the samples are like super cross eyed or the eyes are divergent. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if it's a. I don't know. Yeah. What's that? It's like the cardboard without the cardboard? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Could they call them Google Tech Glasses? Okay. I know. Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. They are not the <laughs> well, anyway, that's yeah. it. That's my demo, so thank you. Thank you. So yeah, now we've got Pablo, um, who's going to be representing Epson classes, and he's going to do a short presentation. And then after that, um, we're going to be Stephen's going to be set up over there with the Google Cardboard, one maybe two. Pablo's going to be set up somewhere maybe here. Maybe he'll just stay right here actually. And then I'll be in the corner with the Oculus, which we're going to set up now, and then we'll just play it for a little bit, and uh, you know we'll see how it goes. I know we you know, started a little late, but if you guys are interested and down, and we'll just. Did you say you have an Oculus set here? I have an Oculus set in the corner. I'm going to set up with the... Uh, Bro, you don't play. The Rift or the Gear VR? Sorry? The Rift or the Gear Oh, the Oculus Rift DK2. Oh, cool. With a lead motion head mount that tracks your hands. Did you bring the... Uh, I'm going to just bring the... Lead motion? There's the box.
classes. Has anybody ever seen these or heard of them? Yeah, no. I think you were last year in the Mental World Expo, right? Uh, I just started this year, but it may have been. Well, you may have seen Eric. Eric, yeah, Eric from uh, So basically, what these are, I don't know if I'll use the slides much. I just have some YouTube videos I'll, that I'll show some demos on, but you know, it's a corporate slide. <laughs> But basically what we have here, these are, um, unlike the other stuff that you guys have seen before with the cardboard, where you use the phone for the augmented reality, that covers up your, basically your, your, your vision. What this has is a see-through display, and inside this display here you have two projector screens. So you might think, well what is Epson doing in the, you know, in the AR space? They basically have two micro projectors on each side here, and they shine the image in the middle of the screen here. And what that lets us do is basically have uh, content on both sides or the same content on both sides or separate ones. So you can do stereoscopic images or you can do 2D, uh, 2D images. Uh, in the device itself, we have some head tracking technology as well. So when you move around, you can basically update the content. And on the controller itself, you also have uh, head tracking technology. The controller is actually made up of So this is what you get in the headset. You have a, a gyroscope, you have a compass, you have a accelerometer, and on the controller itself, it's, you, know, you have a touchpad. And it's basically, essentially, you can think of this as an, an Android phone with a display on your, on your face. So anything your Android phone can do is essentially what this is. So as a result, the development for this is exactly the same as what's shown uh, previously. You can use all the popular uh, SDKs that are out there to develop either virtual reality or, or augmented reality functions. So in terms of, this slide is basically in terms of, this is kind of an old slide um, based on what the offerings in, in, the, um, in the tech world were probably like 2014 or so. But basically you have a quadrant here, right? So you have, either you have two displays, which is like Google Glass, or one display, sorry, which is like Google Glass, or you have two displays. Um, so it's either transparent or you can uh, not see through it, right? So in terms of it being, being binocular, two screens, you would have our offering, or for example, Holland's would be in the transparent side, or you would have uh, the Oculus or Cardboard uh, or Samsung VR on this side. And this is obviously the famous uh, Google Glass. Um, <laughs> so, again, this information is a little out of date. But basically, you just see a price comparison here. Um, we're pretty much at the $700 range um, for this kind of stuff. The hardware, I'd say, is a little bit maybe one or two years old. Um, it's rumored, perhaps, that in 2016, this will be an uh, upgrade, a pretty, pretty powerful um, uh, upgrade. Um, and comparable to other solutions, if you want to do this kind of stuff, I think probably our main <coughs> most popular competitor is obviously HoloLens. And I don't think we pretend to be anywhere near close to that kind of technology. But if you basically want to play with AR or VR in this space with a see-through display, I think we're a pretty um, affordable entry. Also of note, the other kind of people in this area are catering more to like um, enterprise and military. So you, the, their price range and their capabilities are pretty, you know, on the higher end. So what's kind of different also here is that we can do augmented reality and we can also do virtual reality. Basically, if you put on uh, these little shades, you know, you don't get a full immersion like a um, Oculus, but it does significantly come back on, on what you see in the real world. So when you take these off, you can fully see, like I can see the person in front of me and the augmentation. And when I put these on, I can basically just see the content as well as a little bit of the person in front of me. You wear those over your glasses? Yeah, you can wear these over the glasses. <laughs> Not very fashionable, obviously. <laughs> but they also have an attachment that you can put in, uh, that you put prescription on. So you can actually go down to your glasses. Um, but what I found is when I was doing stuff, for example, on, on cardboard uh, VR, is that because you can still get a sense of the outside world, you don't get that motion sickness. I mean, you're not totally blocked out, right? So it's good for that. They're pretty lightweight at 88 grams. It's lighter than having like an iPhone on your face, basically. Uh, it's pretty powerful hardware. It's not the latest and greatest, but perhaps it's rumored it, it will be soon. Um, and like I said, it's true stereo because you have two different displays. You have pretty, well, you have very good um, head tracking. Uh, what I meant by tracking, there's not depth tracking. It's something that is not um, really going to offer. Um, 
Okay, it's completely portable, unlike, uh, for example, in Oculus, so you have to walk around with a computer here to do this. Um, it's similar to a, a gear VR in the sense that the whole unit, <coughs> this is the entire unit, you can walk around this. And the battery is a six hour battery life, which I think is longer than what uh, gear VR, for example, offers. Controller can be used as input, it has a trackpad here, as well as um, whatever your, your phone does in terms of motion tracking. And the form factor is, you know, I guess they want to call it the, the pro prosumer line, in terms of, you know, you wouldn't walk around the street wearing these, or you certainly wouldn't drive with these, but they're good for, for the field worker um, or anyone in that kind of enterprise space. And like I said before, since you can see through it, and you can also put the shades on, you get both the VR and the AR experience, or even a combination. For example, um, the, the application, I guess, is being done today is that there might be an augmentation over a, a blueprint of a house, you can look at it, uh, walk around the model, but then you can also jump <coughs> into it and walk around the rooms, still wearing the glasses. What type of connector connects the glasses to the controller? Um, it's some proprietary doohickey that basically sends a video out. Um, I guess you know, I guess I'm that. You also okay. connect it to a phone or something as well? For uh, not in this, uh, not directly for this model. There, there is a third-party person that's doing HDMI input, so you can connect it with anything that has HDMI output. Um, but essentially, the stands on its own. And the 960 by 540 that was listed there, is that per? Yeah, no, no, it's kind of happening. It's 960 all across the country. Oh, okay. So it's a quarter HD um, combined. <coughs> Okay, so, so basically, just like you would be developing for an Android and iPhone, it has a micro USB, so you just connect a cable from this to the computer. If you're using, uh, before Unity, you compile down <coughs> your APK and then just push it forward through uh, ADB or, you know, through Dropbox and whatnot. Um, so the, the dev cycle is basically, you develop, you compile, and then you push onto the device and then you test, just like you would with uh, further Android. So as far as kind of the market that uh, Epson is seeing customers for right now, it's essentially enterprise level and, you know, I guess uh, pioneering hackers that are interested in, in this kind of stuff. Um, you know, here we have like, uh, these are just the typical AR scenarios that, that we see on, you know, on YouTube that have been demoed today that we do with stuff. Um, they call it second screen, where you basically have information where you're basically hands-free. So that's also what's different from the other ones where you perhaps you have to put the goggles on, you can use your hands, but then you like the cardboard, uh, a Google card, you just have to hold it to your, to your head. Um, this is completely hands-free. And um, uh, desktop work, de uh, desktop worker, uh, remote support is kind of interesting because it has a camera on it. So the most, I was uh, recently at, uh, at ITSEC, which is a big military conference, um, simulation conference, and, Basically, everyone there was like, I'm, in a, I'm on a Navy ship and I have to train my computers on how to <coughs> use uh, different repairs there, how do we do it. So I talked about how to use uh, trackers to augment on top of the model. But the, the simplest way, just turn the camera on, and then a technician will only kind of see what that person's doing to guide them through. Basically, essentially, a Skype call right? through the uh, boxes. Um, so this is an example of what I'm referring to. If you're doing a repair, track the real world object and then augment on top of that for the particular instructions. So this can show a hammer that's uh, showing how to, how to hit the screwdriver and then spin that item off. And all the uh, AR, SDK, and also VR uh, platforms or SDK all that will work within this platform. Hmm. So all your skills are transferable to, to that library. Uh, so this is just a silly uh, maze game. So, it's the same uh, idea that you have a tracker in this case.
<laughs> so, yeah, I guess so the, the typical uh, AR, AR and VR um, SDKs work with this, uh, this headset. I'm just going to probably go to the, the demos that I have here. So, these are demos that I have uh, to show here today. Uh, if you want to get a kind of a sense of like a hololens type experience or holographic uh, experiences, some of the demos I made for these things. So, um, the issue here is really hard to like film content on this because there's no real video out and especially when you're filming something that's see-through. So what I had to do was basically take my cell phone and paste it up here against the screen. So whatever my cell phone has, I have a really private cell phone, it cuts off, you know, the whatever the screen is. So actually what you're seeing is actually bigger than that. So as I walk around this marker, it's uh So my name's take on uh, Twitter is Paul Leo, so one inspiration is the stuff that Leonardo da Vinci is doing as far as objects and just all And it's the reason I got to this because, like, it, you know, most people were just in this space. I saw the HoloLens demo video at the beginning of the year, and I thought, you know, I really wanted to get into this and do this. But there's really there wasn't any hardware at the time that supported that, and Murray was the closest thing to it. So I was fortunate enough to kind of tweet out, to tweet out my experiments on uh, Twitter, and I was going to play Epson and then basically um, do like the R&D essentially, part of R&D to play with stuff. This is uh, similar to the Magic Leap stuff we did under the solar system. Is it still Yeah, it's much more impressive than you see it through the glasses. And the neat thing about AR is that the marker itself can be, for example, an existing textbook of a solar system, right? So you don't really have to cheat. Essentially, that's what it means you can augment stuff on top of what it currently exists. Uh, I'll just show this last one. This is silly concept that came up with the uh, holographic suit timer. <laughs> I think I should probably spend too much time on the video giving <laughs> a tutorial on these suit. Oh, this is also filmed through the uh, glasses. What do you mean filming through the glasses? The camera is filming me as I'm walking with the suit. And then this is the resulting here. Uh, with your cell phone? No, with that actual glass of cell This is a cell phone part, yeah. But the part of it was, was the camera cell phone. So the idea is that it recognizes the label of the soup and is able to augment the app on top of it. So what's really interesting is like there should be this massive push by corporations to just like, like Starbucks should put up their markers and McDonald's and basically everyone should just throw it up in the cloud and provide some sort of API that people can hook into so you can, you know, provide interesting apps. In the future you'd buy, you know, you'd basically buy the objects just to have the holograms. You know, um, you can imagine for example you buy a Bud Light or whatever the year and you'd have the models coming out of it. So, so <laughs> anyone from McDonald's here by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so there's, you know, it's kind of like we, we our world will suddenly change once someone makes the breakthrough of an acceptable form factor of glasses. Um, it's just, it's, I think it's inevitable because everyone's imagination is kind of pining towards that. So, all, you know, we're going to laugh maybe in a couple years that we'll put these kind of things on our plate with these, and, but essentially we're moving pretty rapidly in that direction. But basically what you're saying is the marketing implications of the system once it is up is just fast. Yeah. Basically every logo, every branding mechanism is going to have some sort of attractive, right. augmented application. And people will talk about the holograms yeah. and spread it around, you know. And, and it's interesting because there's a tree because you can't see them. Right, so right. Sure. So there's a hidden layer. It's like, right. you know, how do I get to that next layer? On top of it just being like a GPS and so mm -hmm. I should be able to put them on and see where I am in this location. You know, where the metro map down there, that big sign of the big end of the metro map should have a big map. The metro, you know? So there's, there's tons and tons and tons of opportunities. So if you are, if anybody's interested, <laughs> I mean, developing something. Last year on the Inventive World Expo, there was a guy who already had a company to 
sell virtual reality real estate, meaning physical reality for <laughs> now. <laughs> so I'm sorry, guys, you're too late. <laughs> so, so somebody's selling the space of the venture a little bit, oh, or try, you know, trying to sell it right, right, right. for some application. Probably, I mean, it's kind of weird at this point as to what platform, but okay. Yeah. There's a company. <laughs> Um, okay, what did I have here? Okay, so, so I have those kind of demos to show today. Um, but one thing I've gotten into a lot is uh, 360 video. Um, I'm sure you guys maybe, maybe have or haven't, but if you go to YouTube now, YouTube and Facebook are making a big push and investment in getting uh, stereoscopic and also VR video. Essentially, it looks like this when you play it. You'll see a little, a little control here. If you're on the browser, you can just pan around, right? So where's, where's the dude coming in? Oh, right, here it comes. And you're basically in the scene. And so, so, you know, the UI here is I have to click around, right? But when you put the glasses on, you can actually turn around. It's, it's really, really cool. So I've been working, uh, doing a lot of, um, actually, I have a webinar tomorrow. Um, if you go to my Twitter, I'll, build, um, I'll basically talk about how I build this stuff. So there's, there's essentially a stereoscopic, um, 360 video, there's just 360 video, and then there's 360 photos. And I have all those demos that I can show here today as well. Um, one, one thing also, if you, if you move the thumbnail over here, you see the thumbnail looks kind of weird. It's because that's essentially overlaying two. It's one big JPEG, and it has two layers, one for the left side, one for the right eye. So what the software does is basically the top and the bottom. Shows them on the left and right screen. And then you've got visual effects in there as well, right? Like the, the yeah, yeah. So you're, you're doing like a 360 VFX scene integrated into that? No, no, this is actually burnt into that, right? So all this stuff that you see here is essentially in the original JPEG. Or is it a sphere? Right. Oh. Is, it, is it a video of a sphere? Yeah, so, so, the, so it's pretty, um, I cover this tomorrow. Essentially, all you need to do is just take the rectangular image and map it into a sphere and then put a camera right in the middle. And so I also did a uh, port of Google Cardboard. So anything you have working with Google Cardboard, you can use with uh, with Mulberry. So sorry, but just to, just to clarify here, so the the effects that you're having there, those are pre-rendered essentially, and they're just like, <coughs> they're integrated into the film. Are you talking about the stuff that's coming out, the Fantasia looking stuff? Yeah, the part, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all. Yeah, that's part of the film. I'm not doing that in the. In the no, no, but do you need to be on the still frame in order for that to show up, or can you keep rotating as that moves through? Yeah, no, when, when this is playing in, in glasses or this, it'll, it's cool because it's stereoscopic, so you'll, you'll see it fly by you, right? Because so it's, it's masked it's by like the guy in the foreground, too. Right. So. There's, there's, there's some an After Effects. There's an After Effects plugin now. Yeah. So it yeah. actually yeah. has the, the it it wraps that so you can do all your effects and stuff with the spherical wrap. Okay. Uh, so you're working with a 2D image, but it's, a sphere, it's actually a spherical. Okay, image. so it's not like a cube map thing that's... Right, so the map. artist could then draw masks to do all the stuff that they normally would. And it looks like this is probably locked off camera, so they don't have that to do motion tracking, but motion tracking could be done too if the camera's going to be. So it's not shoulder to camera? It's just one camera? So it takes you to show screen. It looks like they're just doing different yeah. placements, or it looks like they're locked off yeah. camera. So it's a little bit like camera, is it? Um, interesting. Those cameras are not in. Camera set up. I mean, you have, you have uh, several different ways you can go about doing it. The standard one is six cameras, where you have one camera per paint on the cube. Right. Um, I personally have shot a lot of these six camera ones, and I hate it because the stitch is really hard to put together. Um, I really like the cylindrical systems, and I know uh, Google came out with one that's 16 cameras, cylindrical. And they also came out with hardware and firmware that syncs all the cameras together. That's the other hardest part about the whole thing is syncing all your uh, lower frame and upper frame the visible, the visible video together and making it all perfect. Otherwise, you get this weird like clipping off time thing. Um, I also 3D printed out a GoPro rig that is a sphere. Did you see a lot of those like in the Kia rig and stuff like that? Um, works gets great coverage because if you have like a tripod or whatever it's hooked onto all the cameras around in the sphere will actually overwrite its different views so that you can make <coughs> that, that uh, tripod disappear but the view of your like um, you actually
actual video view gets so distorted when it's wrapped around a sphere that it's kind of difficult to stitch together. Where if you just have a cylindrical one and they're all mapped up perfectly aligned and flat, it's way easier. Um, but then there's also through uh, stereoscopic where you're doubling all of those pairs. And actually, you can have one more reserve. Going down on that, okay? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheaper and there's recurring new cameras, which is just going to come out. So about 350 bucks. Kodak has one. Yeah, that tracks. So there's yellow box. Yeah, so it's a 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 yellow box. Yeah, so it's